out, critter busters. Gans all torn up, and mine's got like a harpoon thing in her neck, and they're getting bigger. <laughs> Those, um, man-eating hairballs that you do not believe in. Critters. <laughs> they bite. Hey, guys. Welcome to another episode of They Bite, the only Critters podcast ever. That's right. I'm Sean, and this is Chris. How's it going, guys? There we are. And, um, we're, we're bummed because we just did a second take recording. Like, months ago, we recorded an interview with uh, Sean, what's his name? Sean Owen Roberts from Critters yeah. A New Binge. Right. He's an actor from the upcoming, you know, movie, TV show, we're not sure. And that first time, it was a really good interview, and it didn't record. And he gave us a second chance months later tonight. Didn't record again. So, here's the episode we're doing instead. <laughs> So first off, anybody who listens to this podcast, if you guys know anything about recording podcasts or audio or anything using a cell phone, uh, phone calls, please let me know information about what is better to use. I use a, an app right now called Call Recorder, which just records every phone call that I have. And for some reason, it just likes to randomly not work. And apparently three-way calls, it just won't work at all. Right. So, Plus he was in like British Columbia or something. Yeah. So if anybody knows anything about recording podcasts via phone calls yeah. or anything about it, let me know if you can help yeah. me out or if you know another yeah. way to do so. Because we, yeah. we could do a lot better podcasts and more interviews if we have the means to do it. Absolutely, because this was a real fail twice in a row. That's kind of a bummer. Yeah, But um, it was nice talking to him. He did. Um, he didn't give us too much information. If anything, we were kind of feeding him information. Cause he, <laughs> we kind of know more about it than he does as far as, I mean, he, he obviously filmed it, but um, but he did say it was going to be very gory. He did confirm that they're still going to shoot spikes. The bounty hunters will be there. It was filmed in Canada. Um, he said that there was a scene that takes place in a pet shop ooh, where critters yes. attack a pet shop. Yes, they show up to the aftermath, and he said that the one girl in the scene, the actress, could not stomach the scene very well, I'm assuming, because there were a lot of mutilated pets, which is quite dark, uh, and I, I'm, I'm very interested. But outside of that, he said that it was really fun to film, um, that it seemed very funny and humorous. So, I don't know, and he, and he just pretty much said that it, uh, you know, complements, you know, its source material and, not, and it doesn't insult it. So let's hope. Yeah. He also said there's going to be a scene that takes place in a park where the him and the sheriff show up and it's just like chaos that happens. Yeah. It's like mass people getting running around with critters eating them and shit. That sounds pretty good. Um, so first we want to apologize that we can't deliver that interview to you guys again. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, but outside of that, he really didn't have any, much more information than we hadn't gathered on our own. Except he did an awesome, awesome intro for the he for did. the episode where he played his character and yes. introed the podcast as his character. But you yeah. guys won't ever get to hear that. Yes, and he plays a sheriff. Once the show's released, he is the sheriff. Yeah. Show, movie, whatever. Moving on. So we have some new news. I don't know if it's news, but it's definitely clickbait that's been popping up about uh, who's the guy who just did the new Halloween? Jordan. Uh, David Jordan. Gordon Green. Right. He wants to reboot Critters and what was the other one? Well, let's just talk about that one first. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah. So this kind of came up like the day after the, the Blu-ray special features were announced, I believe. Um, yeah. and it, just, it was just like an, an article that said, you know, David Gordon Green interview uh, wants to reboot Critters. And with that, um, it's not really news because it's just kind of like somebody asked him what he would be interested in doing after doing Halloween. And he just said, well, I'd be interested in doing something about some type of monster movies, you know, rebooting, you know, uh, Critters. That would be a fun movie to reboot. Right. And sometimes humor doesn't translate well to text. Yeah. And he he could have been being sarcastic for all we know. 
he is a comedian first. So I don't know how serious I take that whole. Plus, that has been a clickbait article every four fucking days on these horror websites lately. Freddie says he might have one left in him. Nancy from Elm Street says she might have one left in her as if she's done anything in the past 30 fucking years. <laughs> you know, it's just like, Jesus, we get it. Horror is big right now because of Halloween and the movie Halloween. But uh, I don't know. I'm getting a little sick of it. Uh, I just now, I just hate that just because somebody says that they they would enjoy making one of those movies, that it's people re- replenish that out onto the social media as a news story by them actually doing it. And it's not... Exactly. These horror websites are worse than your most cliche tabloid, you know, writer. They'll, they'll take half a sentence and blow it completely out of proportion because they know it's what people want to hear. And then if you actually read the fucking article... They, you know, the guy, that, most of the time, that's not even what they say. It's a quip from a sentence that most of the time actually says they're not going to end up doing that. The Freddy one, if you read the whole quote, more or less confirms that he's not going to. <laughs> yeah. Um, this, there's the, the tabloids are just like more clickbait than the Grover's Bend Gazette. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that's true. That's true. Um, but it was like right after this more competition news came through, it was like right after that, then like a day or two later came this big announcement of sci-fi channel looking yeah. to acquire the rights to critters and killer clowns from outer space to make new movies. But there wasn't yeah. really any information given on this subject. It was just that right there it was like, I don't know if it was somebody who knew somebody that works for sci-fi or if sci-fi made an announcement saying, you know, we're looking to get the rights to it or, or what. So we kind of, I, I don't know if anybody tried to dive into it really, but from my understanding is they are just trying to acquire the rights. They haven't done so yet. Um, no, they're yeah. just looking in to try to get the, the rights to do a critters movie. But then right. someone else commented on there who is close to the franchise saying no it's them trying to do critters a new binge they're trying to get the rights to do critters a new binge as a sci-fi channel which makes more sense to me because that seems more up sci-fi's alley is just buying something that's already complete and not released yet and and releasing it on their own merit and the killer clowns one i I can't even that just seems like clickbait but the critters one seems likely because new binge is up in the air I don't think we could talk to one person right now who knows what's going to happen with it. Um, and so that just seems like the the likely alternative that it would end up on sci-fi. Yeah. The only thing that I was thinking of is from where the, the killer clowns from outer space was also in that same article yeah. and that there's not a new movie of that one yet. So they would have to make a new movie that it could be a possibility of them being like, oh, we're going to take a budget. And we're going to make a new Critters movie and a new Killer Clowns movie based from one budget and it not actually be something from Critters and New Bands. That could just be... Well, in my opinion, I don't trust sci-fi with the franchise. <laughs> True. I, I don't. Like, if they, if they acquire New Binge, that's fine to me because that just gets released. It doesn't really matter who acquires it to me as long as they don't alter it, you know, in any way. Um... But I don't trust sci-fi. As much as I like the Tremors TV series, it, oh, geez, I, you know, sci-fi really does, it, name one sci-fi made thing that's, like, brilliant. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Were the alligator movies sci-fi? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> Was it Jeff or wasn't it? Well, he changed. Changed? They were wearing really funny clothes. Like they was from Los Angeles. Okay, everybody, just calm down, huh? Over. Yes, they're over. There's been a disturbance at the Bolarama Lane. Over. Yeah, what kind of disturbance? Over. Well, evidently, some guys shot up the bar. You get a description, over. Well, uh, it's kind of strange, Harv, but Jake says it was Reverend Miller and Charlie and some stranger. Now, hold it, hold it, hold it. I, I, I'm not reading you clear, so I'll repeat that. Over. Reverend Miller 
Charlie McFadden and some stranger just shot up the bar at the bowl around the lane. Over. Have you heard from Jeff? Over. I can't raise him, Harv. I also got a report here about shots fired out Route 22 near the Brown Place. Over. Harv, do you read? Over. Well, I want you to keep trying to raise Jeff. I'm headed over to the bowling alley, and I'm going to head out towards the Brown Place. Over and out. Anyways, continue. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so, yeah, it was just kind of up in the air of whether or not this news is something to actually be news um, until we get more information because all we know is that sci-fi is trying to get the rights. Don't know if they have. Don't know what it's for. Could be a new movie. Could be Critters, a new binge. We just don't know. I yeah. personally would love to see a new movie. I don't really want it to be done by sci-fi, but no. I'm almost to the point where as long as stuff's getting made, I'm kind of happy. Like, well, from, from what we know, and pretty much, I, I do know the new binge is done. It, it's edited. You know, it, it's been shown to people. So that's what makes me think sci-fi wants it that much more because I'm assuming it's being passed around at this point. Yeah, and so. I think that is likely, but at the same time, I don't think it's likely. I'll tell you what I think the absolute bitches, dude. The channel Shudder, S-H-U-D-D-E-R, that um, Joe Bob's last drive-in aired on, if New Binge were to premiere on that channel, I think that it would be the best publicity for it. Like, I really like New but if it's good, the best way it could reach the audience that will appreciate it would be if it were to end up on that channel shutter. Um, that channel is not just like, you know, there was that fear channel and stuff that played horror and whatnot, but shutter really does seem to get like the cult uh, status of horror fans, you know, Joe Bob, Joe Bob Briggs having lots of movie like microwave man. Oh girls. How you doing? Huh? You a little hungry? How about I give you to the old farts upstairs tonight, huh? Iris on the apartment complex, Frank Longo at your service. Uh, yo, right here, right here, Mr. Briggs. Yes, well, yes, I did. Yes, I did. Mario is history as of right now. The way I look at this is that you are making all the El Giganto profits off the sale of this shit, or not little old moi. Well, well, maybe it's time that you get down here and get involved. But I'm not lifting another finger until you pay me for Mario. You got that? You can take that to the bank. Boom. Upstairs where you belong. <laughs> Work with me. You're cutting out really bad. Oh, you 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 didn't get any of that. I uh, you started it started like a uh, robo like sounding. Oh shit. Well, anyways, I just think the best thing that could happen for the new binge to reach the audience that it should would be if it were to air on Shutter. Yeah, I I think Shutter's a great. The streaming service and everything. I don't have Shutter, so that would suck. That have to be something else. I have to Plus pay four for. bucks. <laughs> but um, the only thing that I can give Sci-Fi credit for is like if they were to acquire a new binge, is I think it would be really well advertised because they push their movies no matter how 
bad they are. There's always TV spots for them. There's always commercials, and um, they'll air them over and over and over again. I don't even know too many people who have cable anymore. Like, I almost think the worst thing that could happen is for it to end up on cable because streaming services have taken over. I have cable. <laughs> yeah, I know you do, dude. But, you know, so do my parents. They have an answering machine, too. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody has answering machines for their they have on their cell phones. Oh, that's true. That's a voicemail. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same thing. <laughs> what is it? That is it. The voicemail is I have a tape, and no one checks their voicemail. Everyone checks the answering machine. <laughs> oh, I'm, still, I'm going with the same thing. It's the exact same thing. I'm not me. wrong. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a home phone? No, I do not. You don't? Except my, you still, except you still my cell phone. On the wall, though, don't you? No, I don't, but my cell phone no. is at home right now, so technically this is my home phone. Okay, all right. <laughs> okay. Uh, you have a landline. <laughs> no, I don't. Okay, I wish I did. I miss I my did. I miss my grandparents' house. They had a uh, a rotary, the rotary phone. So yeah, 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 my mind did too. I thought that was funny. Like if you had to call nine one one, you had to like wait for the. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, by the time you get to one, you like stabs twice. <laughs> <laughs> Um, let's see. So there's not really too much more critters news about that. It's not even really news. It's just critters is being talked about, and that's nice. Um, now, what the dude who just made Halloween getting all the anime when your critters? I don't think it's gonna happen. Hey, hey, Sean, you're you're doing Robo again. Sorry. Oh, really? Um, now, what do you think? Oh, whoa, whoa gonna... <laughs> you got really loud. <laughs> okay, yeah, <laughs> you're gonna have to edit this one, I think. Yep. Um, what I don't think it's going to happen. You don't think it's going to happen, and I don't think he was even serious. But what do you think of the guy who just made Halloween making the the critters? Um, I'm almost like I'm like 99 percent certain that it's not going to happen at all. Ever. Yeah, me too. It's so stupid. Um, the only thing that I can say positive note uh, is if it were to actually happen, is the fact that he he did such a great job. Like I didn't like the new Halloween movie. But yeah. it it made its money, and that if he did Critters, I almost more than likely it would be a theatrical movie. Yeah, it would be it'd be the biggest thing that happened since the original Critters came out, pretty yeah. much. Yeah, it would it would be hyped to shit. We know that they would look amazing. Um, whether we like the movie or not, we can probably guarantee that they would look fucking amazing. The Critters themselves. Agreed. Um, yeah, you know, a part of me wishes it would, but I just it's just so stupid to even think that it will that I can't take the idea that serious. Um I did like the new Halloween though. I I'm I'm backwards on you on that. But uh, what well, can you do? Well, how about this guys? If you're listening to this podcast and you want to hear me and Sean's thoughts on the new Halloween movie, let us know and if we get a bunch of people to 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 comment and let us yeah. know, maybe we'll do a podcast about the new Halloween film. Yeah, I could do that. I went and saw it three times already, so I could definitely discuss it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. But outside of that, I don't think we have too much more critter stuff to say for this one. We don't, uh, but we do have something kind of unique to talk about. Yes, and what is that? So, because you're such an awesome person, and from where I was in the hospital, you bought me the Critter's Socks. <laughs> yeah. These are these are socks that were used and given out to cast and crew on set of Critters 2 while filming. Yep. yep. And somebody posted them up online for sale. Um, actually, fairly cheap for them to be something that was used on set of a movie. Yeah. Um, and these were only given out to cast and crew, so there's probably not too many because I don't know how far down the cast line that they would have made stuff for. But I mean, neither. And, and these have been rumored, like for like we've known they've existed, like but we've never seen them. Yeah. So we've, we like, we yeah. knew that Leanne Curtis had a pair. We yeah. knew that special effects artist uh, Chris Biggs had a pair. Yeah. Uh, and then some random pair showed up on eBay, and Sean decided to buy them for me. Yeah, um, and they are well used, aren't they? <laughs> they actually look pretty clean. <laughs> they look cleaner in person. The yeah. pictures, they look stained as shit, man. <laughs> I think he washed them before, but um, I got oh, the, the... <laughs> I got the package in the mail, 
and I lo- just flipped it over and looked at it, and it was sent from Edward Kyoto. That's crazy. So those <laughs> socks came and was worn by Edward Kyoto while on the set of Critters 2. Yeah, that's funny, too, because I, I messaged. See, I bought these for you, and I got a hold of Leanne, and I sent her the picture, and I was just like, are these it? You know, I just wanted to confirm it. Because I could have swore she described them differently to us. I could have sworn she said that they said Critters 2 and the main course on them. But in, in reality, they just say Critters, and it's in the original movie's font, not the Part 2 font. Yeah. Um, but when I saw, showed her the picture, she did confirm that those are it. And then, uh, and then she gave you a ring. Yeah, she, she called me. She called me and to check on me yeah. when I was in the hospital. It was yeah. An unexpected yeah. phone call. It was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. It was awesome. Um, so then I sent, you know, the person on eBay a message, and I was just like, "Hey, just as a fan, for the record, how are you connected to the movies?" And they just replied with. I did puppeteering on parts one, two, three, and four. I, I didn't even think about that it could be the Kyoto brothers. I'm just like, oh, it must have just been like a, a minuscule like hand who helped out. <laughs> he yeah. did. But I think that he knew that um, you were getting them because I did make the post in the group and stuff. So that was cool. Yeah, uh, he sent a, um, along with those socks, I also got a 8 by 10 photo of a critter. Signed by uh, Stephen Kyoto, Charlie Kyoto, and Ever Kyoto. That's awesome. <laughs> Another surprise. That was just like two surprises right back to back. Yeah, yeah, that was a surprise to me too. I mean, yeah, that's really cool, man. Uh, but you also, that. you also got something yourself. Yeah, I did. Yes, I got the critter. Uh, the critter. It is. It is. I'm looking at it right now, man. <laughs> it's always right next to my TV, right across from me on the couch. His eyes are lit up, and I named him Mr. Handsome for <laughs> obvious reasons. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I don't know what more to say. Childhood dream come true. Fucking. The only reason not to die is just so I can keep living at this point. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, you got the you got the the main critter um, <clears throat> that was replicated by Chris Hampton, yeah, um, and was on display at the Kyoto Brothers booth at Monster Palooza, and right. was the inspiration slash rip off design for the Blu Ray cover set. Absolutely, yep. It it is something else. It was uh, not cheap, you know. I took it alone. Um, the single went- best replica ever made. Ever, yeah. He's making another one um, with a different expression from part two. Um, I'm sure somebody will get that if he doesn't hold on to it. And then he is going to make a part one, which I'm very excited to see that. Um, And he's making a baby crate, I believe, from part two as well. He does not want to do three or four. He hates those movies. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely the best, and I'm honored to have it. It's it's surreal. I hope someday you can see it in person because it's sure very, yeah. It's uh, because I had the one before, and it just makes me realize that that was just like a latex mask that had a stick shoved up its ass. This thing, you put it in the light, it looks like it's wet. You know, it looks like real skin. You feel it. You can't just squeeze it. It's like touching a real freaking animal with meat under its skin. Um, the eyes don't look like glass. They look wet, you know, as if it's blinking. It's just, it's out of this world. It really is. I wish everybody who cares could come over and see it. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so something else uh, we can talk a little bit about. Um, Paul Ashford, um, who runs the Little Rubber Monsters Facebook page, Hell yeah. Um, he recently went and undiscovered, or I guess discovered, the uh, filming locations for Critters 2 and Critters 3. Hell yeah, he did. He took some uh, videos, and uh, they were on the Critters Rehatch YouTube page, and he posted them yeah. on the Critters Rehatch group page. Exactly. Talking about like making dreams come true, I mean, that dude's living out a dream for us right there. Um, another year of the Crite moment. Uh my favorite, honestly, was the the part three because it looks almost exactly how it did. Yeah, I I thoroughly enjoyed seeing the um, 
Megan Morgan's house in um, from Critters 2. That was. Really it really cool. looks a lot like how it does too. The fence and everything. It's it, oh, it's so surreal. Um, I think what hit me about part three because that was the first location he went to. Yeah. And I'm scro- I'm scrolling, you know, through Facebook at work or whatever, and I just see this video pop up, and I instantly it just like it clicked in my brain. I was like, "The fuck! It looks like Critters Three, man." And that and that I look at it's a video from Pa, and he's like, "Hey, I found the location." I'm just like, "No way!" <laughs> I was so geeked on that. That is just so cool to me. Um, those little windows to the the basement you know or whatever they're just they're still there it's just uh, i don't know there's something about that yeah and um we were assuming that the the inside of it was probably used because it's an apartment complex so we were assuming that the inside of it was also used for filming the apartment complex in the movie but yeah. uh michael felsher from red shirt pictures he's one of the guys who did uh, a lot of the bonus features for the blu-ray set um he commented on the post and he let everybody know that the inside of the apartment complex and the spaceship area for Critters 4 were all filmed in an old supermarket store. I uh, don't know if they have an address or anything for that, but no shit. That was That's all something. that was all a set that was built inside an old supermarket, so Oh wow. Ah. Wow. That is cool. So, and then uh, where, where else? Oh, he he found the hungry heifer location. Not the hungry heifer. I'm sorry. The, the polar burger. Polo burger. Yeah, the intro of the right. gate. And he actually took a yeah. picture of himself laying down uh, right at the, the gate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's so cool. Like, <laughs> I don't know, man. That that's definitely him putting up those videos. I was just like, I, not like I'm not sitting there like envious or anything. I'm like totally happy for the guy. Because uh, I don't know, he he had to have put in a shit ton of effort to find those locations, I'm and sure. he's also he's not from America either. No, he's from UK. Know? Yeah, so he's out here in America just checking out fucking critters locations. This, stuff, yeah. That was his vacation. He he went on vacation to do this, <laughs> and I was like, holy crap, man! Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, he met he met up with Leanne Curtis. You know, it's really cool. Oh, uh, I was so I was hoping that that Leanne would go up to the filming locations with him. And I'm surprised she didn't. It. Yeah, but yeah, that that was like the kickoff. He's like, hey, I'm hanging out with Leanne. She had like her parrot on her. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and then next thing you know, he's at all these locations. I'm like, what the fuck, dude? And then he hit up some others. I think he went to like. Um, Haddonfield, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, that that's just that's some dedication. I want to say he found a location from Ghoulies too. Yeah, the Ghoulies three, the um, the frat house or something like that. It was yeah. <laughs> so cool. That that is really dedication. Um, I also didn't know that he ran Little Rubber Monsters until he uh, put this up. Yeah. And I've always I've admired that site for some time. It is just a a good page. Um. So if you guys haven't, check out Little Rubber Monsters Facebook, Instagram. Yeah, that Paul a, Paul does a great job. He finds absolutely. I don't know how he he finds some of this stuff, but he he even went through it. If you guys remember, he went through and found newspaper clippings from 1986, 1987, 1988 in L.A. Um, during the filming of Critters 2 that were showing like just the local newspaper office was just yeah. typing up, you know, oh a movie's being filmed on the street here and. It's being yeah. in Critters too, and it's like it's yeah. really hard to find things. Yeah, how the hell did he find that? Not even being in the goddamn country. <laughs> no clue. Fucking, fucking crazy son of a bitch. I love him. But he, every <laughs> once in a while, he'll send me a message on on Messenger, and he's just like, "Look what I found," and I'm like, "Share it now." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's cool. It really is awesome. In the past year, the Critters community, I feel, really is. Um, you know, it's just like ten to twenty people, but you know, we're all we're all friends. You know, we all communicate what little we do, even if it's just in that group. Yeah, and it's really it's really awesome. It's, it feels like something special because, um, you know, you can go in the Nightmare on Elm Street group and stuff, and you know, it, it's not the same because everybody and their mother is thinking about Elm Street all day. But there's just a select few people in the world that are thinking about critters all day, and we've all found each other, and it's very nice. And we're growing all the time. We're almost up to 600 members now, I think. Exactly. Shit, I posted my the picture of my critter, Mr. Handsome, and 
I think it almost got 100 likes. And I was like, damn, I didn't even know there was that many people in this group. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking awesome. Um, also, Sean, while we're on the podcast here, I wanted to, to ask you about this and see what your thoughts were. Sure. Um, so I wanted to, to do this thing um, kind of like as an episode of the podcast, and it would be For the Love of Charlie. And yeah. we ask everybody in the group to record their own, uh, vi- like not video, just audio of them explaining their favorite moment of Charlie, why they li- love Charlie so much. And they'll send that to me and I'll put it all together in a montage for an episode. Yeah. I, yeah. I think that'd be awesome. Um, j- just to, just to get everybody into an episode of the podcast alone, I think I like that idea, you know? Yeah. And I was also thinking about doing the same thing again for, for the love of critters. And yeah, ask everybody yeah. their favorite moment from any of the Critters movies, their favorite person, character, Absolutely. or why they love it, how they discovered it, and just put right. them all into a montage and make an episode for it. Yeah, I think it'd be really nice. Um, of course, that won't be the first time that the Critters community has came together and done something because there is a um, porno parody called Clitters coming out <laughs> um, with J.R. Philher, um, <laughs> Chris Sachs. Um, and Jonathan Lindsay as himself. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Asford. Uh, <laughs> oh, I laughed so hard when I saw that post. <laughs> Just Jonathan Lindsay as himself. And then the dude, and then the, and then the dude starts writing the fucking script for it. And I'm like, son of a bitch, of course he... <laughs> I can just picture <laughs> picture the tagline now, Sean. Eat out more fright. <laughs> yeah, eat out more. <laughs> oh my god, uh, uh, that's too fantastic. <laughs> but yeah, that, that'd be a great episode idea. Yeah, that's what we should do next, and hopefully it records. Oh wait, we <laughs> we can edit that one together. <laughs> but yeah, guys, if you guys are interested, I guess well, I'll make the official announcement in the in the Facebook group. Um, yeah. sometime down the road but anybody who wants to be a part of it uh, just if you can record you know use your cell phone record your own audio and just send the file to me through messenger it usually yeah. works easy like that I can just download it or however you need to send it to me um, just talk about your favorite moment of Charlie uh, why you love Charlie or just any memory you have of you know seeing Charlie for the first time on the screen or just meeting him in person or whatever and we will Ooh stranding all those together in one long episode and everybody can be a part of it. Absolutely. I'll even try to send it to, to Don Opper and let everybody be able to, to tell him personally what they think of him. So yeah, that would be really special. That yeah. would. Um, and I want to thank, you know, Sean from new binge for giving us a second chance at failure. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and we did not disappoint with that. failure. <laughs> Uh, and to all you who are looking forward to that. But I don't think we have too much more to say, do we? No, I think we're done with this episode. All right. Well, on that note, kill more crites. Kill more crites. <laughs> Eat out more crites. Eat out more crites. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have a lot of editing to do on that one. Is that uh, the first half yeah. of that, that you were doing really, really robotic noises there? Well, 